This episode of the Co-Optional Podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace, make it. Welcome, welcome, everybody, to the Co-Optional Jazz Hands podcast. Hell yeah! Hello. <laughs> Come on, George. You've got to get in on I, this. I, get in your I book. don't think I've ever actually done Jazz Hands in my entire life, and I don't know where to start. Um, just I just kind of like... I wiggle yeah. like this part of my hand, and that's it. You oh yeah, yeah. So it's not even like the fingers; You're it's like the wrist. Right, right. Uh, so, too, so, so I'm just okay. gonna like channel my inner Ron Paul and kind of <laughs> try to imagine something great happening. <sighs> yes, I like it. Yeah. Excellent. Right. Welcome to the Co-Optional Podcast, episode 228. Uh, our special Ooh, guest that's today. So many. And yeah, you know, and I haven't been here for most of them, so I get a <laughs> get, I get a pass. Um, I think so. Yeah. Uh, joining us today is the amazing, super qualified, super bunny hop. Welcome Hello. To the show. Hello, and 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 uh, and welcome to to the Co-Optional podcast. <laughs> Please host. Yeah, host yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. No, I, I, I I'm it. I'm used to like introducing myself uh, that way. If 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 we're doing introductions here, I, I guess I might as well go ahead and like plug i'm doing a podcast that i'm really proud of these days dad, sons and, sons. Of, uh, dad and sons yeah if, yeah yeah if listeners are into podcasts uh we try to try to have like a kind of upbeat comedic tone about about angry video game drama and i'm oh i'm really 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 happy with how it's going i have a blast oh. every time i'm on that thing my two friends that i have with me liam and matt are hilarious and and uh we also don't don't pull punches sometimes when it when it comes to real pressing issues which I think we'll be getting into one of those this, uh, <laughs> no. with this episode. There's, There's a reason I asked you to be on yeah, for this specific yeah, something, episode. <laughs> something really sad and important has happened recently that uh, is. Is, is surely good for discussion. Oh, it has. A really yeah. important yeah. question. Yeah. Well <laughs> are you the dad? Or are, or you, are the you the son? son? I... Aren't we I, I'm just gonna let the, the fan lore decide, which we might also <laughs> wait. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, I'm gonna make a podcast. It's gonna be called Dad and Sons, and we're just gonna <laughs> let it happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right, we okay. uh, we we like to improvise, play off each other, and and let let weird things develop as they may, because it's it's 2018, and that's what happens. Yeah, open your mind. It's exactly, Dukes. Come on, which which will be, I think, is another topic. <laughs> Opening our Open minds in 2018. Opening your minds, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so uh, just for people who have not in, in, digested, ingested your content before, where can they find this podcast? Um, uh, on SoundCloud right now. The URL is really big and stupid and dumb, but I don't know. Or I think that's something that I, uh... I think there's a link in your Twitter to it. Right, not? right, right. Okay. Um, if you, if you type in dad and sons in Google, you'll, uh, find your, find your way there fairly easy. I, uh... Patreon funding, so I don't really care that much about the <laughs> SEO advertising stuff. I'm just happy that people love this and that I love it. And right. yeah, it's uh, that's that's what it's all about, right? Having fun yeah, with it, absolutely. So let's see, where have we all been? We unfortunately had to cancel the episode last week um, because there was a hurricane that decided. What? That it, it, <laughs> no. I know. It's like I'm not sure if you're aware, but. Uh, Typically, things don't go crazy haywire here uh, for us in the Charlotte metro area, um, but we get, tend to get a lot of rain from hurricanes, and the rain sort of like sits for a while, and then like old trees, their roots start getting exposed, and then the trees fall mm -hmm. over. I'm lucky to live in an area where our power lines and like phone lines, who has a landline anymore? <laughs> Oof. Um, but they're all like buried underground in oh, my specific nice. neighborhood. So I'm, I'm very lucky to have that. However, um, that doesn't keep 
data exchanges <laughs> from being hit. And so my ISP's sure. data center got hit. And it took me, I want to say somewhere between like six to eight hours to download Two Point Hospital <laughs> throughout wow. the hurricane. <laughs> and that game yeah. is not anywhere near it's not that, that bad. bad yeah no and i'm and so I, i'm thinking if this is my downstream let me just check what my upstream is right now and i, I checked i'm like there is no way that this could possibly it would not be supportable so that mm. is why you did not get a <clears throat> oh the popo coming after somebody what's happening <laughs> I, I apologize for the traffic noises no no it's all I, good. I live it's next all good. to a major intersection so you live in the Atlanta area, which is oh, crazy yeah, traffic. Yeah, oh. yeah. We're, we're famous for that, unfortunately. Yeah, how was Dragon Con for you, by the way, since you're like in the hotbed of where all that happens? Did you actually go or do you just like- I did, I did. Just like, I, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I, I went with the girlfriend this year. She was Velma and I was Shaggy. Amazing. Aww. Yeah, it was the first time she had cosplayed at a con. The second time I did. The first time I was uh, either Mike or Jay from from the Red Letter Media Half in the Bag series. But uh, but but this time I, I got to got to see what it's like being being a more fictionalized, beloved, recognizable character. And it's a completely different experience wearing a costume to a con it versus is. Uh, <laughs> going going plain clothes. Yeah, yeah. It, I think turned out to be a lot more fun that way uh it, it definitely like <laughs> gives you a lot more small talk to uh open up conversations with strangers and um that makes all the difference in the world yeah wearing your interests on your sleeves quite literally uh, uh, yep yep that's a thing <laughs> I, uh, yeah I did I did my first like real cosplaying at anime expo this year it was fucking exhausting. Like way more <laughs> exhausting. Than... I mean, I just got to put on a green V-neck and, and a wig, so Dude, it's, I it's I got the the, the better end of the deal, I think. Yeah, cosplay can like, be exhausting. Yeah, everybody <laughs> like like everyone's energy and excitement about what you're wearing can like I think if you're a more introverted personality can just make you like do this right here I'm wondering right about like, that I'm running out of steam <laughs> I need to I'm, get out of here I'm strongly considering being naked snake for magfest and I was and, naked I was, yes. <laughs> I was considering like taking a pool like a betting pool on how long it would take before you got into something metal gear um so oh my I, god I, I, I think this this qualifies this is where we're at <laughs> however far we're in the yeah. show, that, those are the people who if we started at three, that's less than 10 minutes. I, I met the quota. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's going to be more complicated doing something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I can sometimes be a kind of introverted person depending on the day. So so I just, I I hope things turn out well. That'll be my first like real project versus the, the, the green shirt with khakis for Shaggy. <laughs> we all start somewhere. We all start somewhere. Now, if I mean, if you're literally doing Shaggy who is high, I mean, that's even better. Like in character, you know, you must the character themselves character. is like being kind of lazy about it. Cosplay Crendor. Is there so anything in that cup? Um, I've I've exhausted it by now. I think I just did the last <laughs> sip, but that was like such a ha cha. <laughs> Good like to if the last anything drop. in there. It just fucking splashed. Hmm. Uh, don't worry, I got some water to chase chase okay. the last like you know you know when coffee gets like grounds at the bottom of the cup and it's like mm. a little thicker than the rest of it and it's real strong and bitter. I appreciate that sometimes though. It just wakes me up. Me too. Yeah. It's a good shit. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we should dive right into news. Yeah, let's see. Oh boy. Let's see where we want to start. Um, I guess if we want to use up all of our energy right away, we can dive right into Telltale. Boom, 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 boom. Unfortunately, Telltale, uh, you will know them from such series as the Game of Thrones games, uh, The Walking Dead, probably what they're most known for, I would I would guess. Is, is that fair to say? I think so, yeah. yeah. Um, unfortunately, they are... They have laid off basically everyone except for 25 people with the view to close. And do you know what those 25 people, the skeleton crew, are working on? Oh, uh, working on the Netflix uh, mm -hmm. Minecraft thing? Yeah, everyone's favorite. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, can't wait for that one, huh? And they did, of course, release some sort of update uh, regarding the final uh, episodes for... The Walking Dead, with a view to finishing oh, it. And, and they're thinking of outsourcing it to uh, right. interested parties. Mm. 
Now, see, here's the, here's the thing. That, I, I mean, I don't know if I should have this kind of opinion about it, but just roll with me and let me oh, know boy. if I'm out yeah, of line. Along. Let me know if I'm out of line. Netflix makes tons of money. They green light series that should never see the light of day. <laughs> Somehow, I think it might benefit them to maybe invest in a game studio, like, legitimately. So, why is a company like Telltale not, like, embracing that and then like i don't know i i mm, it's like i feel like i probably shouldn't have that opinion because it's like telling somebody else how to run their business well, netflix i believe uh after telltale was like sorry we're not gonna make any new stuff netflix was like hey we have a bunch of cool properties that we'd love to gamify so like right. if anyone's out there wants to make them i feel like this is one of those things where no one at netflix has the ability Ability or the desire to start up another part of Netflix and they'd uh, rather just outsource well, it to a company that already exists maybe not only that but they also didn't didn't people who work at Telltale like come out saying that basically none of the games ever made money they uh, said yeah. that the past few years had great feedback some of our best products yet but unfortunately did not translate into sales was the press release language i think the I, yeah, not like exact quote but something the close. only thing that made the money and this is maybe i'm wrong on this it, obviously walking dead the first season of walking dead and then minecraft were the yeah they made money on minecraft everything. one was really popular because yeah. minecraft which mm. Uh, it, it breaks Batman my heart was that it's so good. And, yeah. yeah. It's Batman Minecraft was one of their worst, blasts. apparently. Batman. Which is yeah, surprising. Batman lost them like, some of the most money, and it was like their best one, I kind of felt. No, I don't know. Borderlands same. were my is favorite. Batman's one of the ones where, and I knew that, that that had to be the case with Batman because it's one of the games where everyone was talking about it, but barely anyone was playing it. Everyone was like, oh, yeah, did you, see the did you play that yet? No, not yet. I'll get to it. Most people didn't play it. I felt the exact same way with uh, Game of Thrones, where I played the first episode and was like, this is shit. I guess <laughs> the rest of them are. And then I waited, and everyone was like, have you played the new one? No. All right. No one played. Like, so I get it. I get that's what happens. Here's the problem. This is what happens when you release episodic content. Mm. Like, and well, you get some think of the irony of that. Like, episodic content was supposed to save a lot of uh, right. financial difficulties with like long-term AAA video game development, and and cut those lump sums of money into smaller bits. And look, it ended up backfiring spectacularly. Like, not only is this a a heartbreaking story because maybe the past couple years of Telltale might have been underwhelming, but they've had such great moments along the way Absolutely. of like a 12-year sure. run. That, that, I'm not sure if you guys saw on Twitter, I, and I'm, I'm, I apologize that I don't know the, the developer's name, but uploaded like kind of like a video, a, a photo gallery of things like from the very beginning of when they started yeah. with Telltale. And yeah. you could just see how it progressed. It's like they were like just this little tiny bit of a cubicle. And then, you know, all of these moments all cataloged. And I just I was crying by the end of it because I just felt so heartbroken for these people. And it's, it's what scares me about people, you know, wanting to be developers or, you know, work with a small studio. They want to maintain their integrity and make the game that they want to make. But at the same time, this industry is so volatile. It's just like you could be out of a job in six months. And it also, it, sorry, go for it. Oh, I, I, I wanted to, like, point out that, like, the suggestion earlier of, like, getting Netflix to invest, it, it, it could have been a way out. But at the same Stranger time, things. I think, like, a Boom. big <laughs> part of this problem is that around like like the sixth seventh console generation game development prices exploded to the point where nowadays it's common practice in san francisco i don't know if the, like montreal double a studios do this thing but they they the thing that killed them is that investors pulled the plug they are funding themselves off of venture capital rather than sales of their own products yeah and that's a direction the game industry went <laughs> and during like the turn of the millennium that really has not panned out well as a result you have cases like this where like a small comparative handful of people like however many investors there are i'd love to find out who and how many <laughs> something like like 20 to 30 people get to decide the fate of 250 different careers and uh that's just not fair you know well it, it I... also comes down to the kickstarterization i'm gonna make that a word which i think yeah. would be better I hope that X Telltale devs hit Kickstarter hard after this with like their own original projects that uh, that aren't licensed from other creative works. This this reliance on investor funding has stifled creativity. It's made 
careers so much more unpredictable and uh, ultimately studios dependent on investors rather than their very own products they're selling themselves. What it does is it, it does two things. It, one, uh, for people who've always wondered like, how does a game on Kickstarter work? Um, Tell us, Jesse well, Cox. Yeah, well, one, <laughs> you have interest from the public. So automatically, mm. anyone investing in the game knows X like number of people already want this thing that doesn't exist yet. And then you can then take that information and go around to people who are already sketchy about like, I don't know if I want to invest in gaming. Right. And so like you can balloon off of that. And that's how games on Kickstarter get made. And a great example is uh, Monster Prom out now. Pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hear it's got some uh, exciting new content. I've heard that they're like amazing cosplayers making cosplays for Monster Prom and showing up it's, to actual conventions. It's, inc it's incredible. I've never seen anything like in my life. Anyway, Monster <laughs> Prom is a game that I saw like on Kickstarter. I played it with Dodger and people around the office for fun. And afterwards it was like, I fucking love this game and i reached out to the devs and i was like all right look you made your kickstarter money but like i know this is going to cost a lot more so what if i just come on as producer and like fund the rest of this game and <laughs> oh that's what we did and that's and that's like that's how it, it's because i loved what it was and i think when you put yourself out there on kickstarter and stuff like that you can get that love and investment happening um unfortunately the rest of the game industry is like corporate overlord took over at some point and is like you have to do this on this time and do this and we don't care what it turns out to be as long as you sell us copies and we make back money that's like the reality of it unfortunately it, and, it's a and, lot and the thing companies. is though you as an investor actually know how video games work oh i want to and... point out that, that everyone everyone along the way was like what you're wasting you're throwing away your money what are you doing Everyone was like, don't invest in a game. Are you crazy? And I was like, guys, I believe in this. I love this game. And they're like, you're going to lose so much money, dummy. But at the same time, you also have a I platform to that. promote it. I mean, and I don't think, and that's what the thing. I don't think anybody who is a streamer or a YouTuber or, you know, any kind of content creator with the kind of base that you have. I don't think anyone would have said that. I would hope no one would have said that to you because I think most of oh, us know fans. that. Oh, not I'm talking like on the... Uh, accounting side of Cox oh. Towers. <laughs> gotcha. people were like, what okay. the hell are you doing? And I was like, <laughs> so, so like, what oh, you're saying oh. is that financial advisors who might be in, in great amounts of control of the amount of investing that goes in the world do not have faith in a lot of promising video games that people who know the market better might have a better sense for. Mm. And that's ah! at the end of the day, it's one of those like to thine own self be true kind of things where it was a game about monsters dating in a high school and it was a competitive <laughs> dating sim. Like to me, I was of course I'm gonna like this game and promote this. I, I, if I came out to him and was like, here's my mobile running game, people would be like, the Oh fuck? man, what are you doing, Jesse? Like you just know what you can create and like know the team you have, know who you're working with. If you're gonna make a game, make the game that you can create and don't try to be like, we're making the next MMO. There's six of us. Like, don't mm. create what you can make and make <laughs> stuff that will sell to start. Like, if you're small, work your way up. Don't jump to 250 people and try to, like, get 5,000 games published in a year and shit. Like, it's not going to work out in the end. It, it's I'm sorry. Hard. It's hard because, like, looking at Telltale before they shut down, it feels like, at least at this stage, they – were not only out of touch with their own company, but they were also out of touch with what, like the consumers value. Um, the fact yeah. that it's come out, you know, that they did not treat their employees very well, that everybody got let go without severance. And yet they're like, but we're down to finish the rest of this game. And a lot of the people <laughs> who pre-bought the game are like, I don't care about that. Pay your people. Right. right? Like, like they don't, they don't understand like what we, value inside of the industry really the, and the well, fact that they were hiring people right before they shut down dude, the also shit tells me there was a big like disconnect of information across like a dude the was hired the week before someone lost their green card and like had to be deported i was like yeah that's well, crazy and, and their health care runs out in uh less than a week so good luck for people in who got to keep taking medicines yeah I remember seeing that their PR is so affordable. Huh? I, I know. Oh. I remember seeing like their was it their PR person or their community outreach person had had also uh, like put on social media. It's like you guys found out about it when I found out about it, and I'm the only PR person working here or something. Right. Yeah. And I'm just Great. like, what? That's 
for for that person not to even know that just I I don't know it just it's a gutting feeling I feel so badly on behalf of all of the people who and, were mistreated and like, in this layoff. You know, you, you glance over at the chat and you see a lot of this repeated sentiment. The the formula did get stale. And I have a feeling mm. that if they were going to blame anything on poor sales for the past couple of years, it was like, like, like with a license like Batman and Game of Thrones, they, it's hard to imagine how, how they screwed that stuff up because, uh, those are extremely popular franchises with mass market appeal, but apparently the product itself was not either competent or unique enough to make good on that market they, they could have tapped. They like created a situation where they were known for a specific style of story yes. game. The formula. And if an investor, so, yeah, if somebody came to them and was like, I want you to make my property into that game. Yeah. Which you just know, overlay kind of, narrative. It, it, it sums up <laughs> that that actually nicely sums up the disconnect that a lot of investors have with the market. That is, they see something that succeeded in the past. They're like, okay, let's copy that idea. Whereas the people who are consuming the product, the law of diminishing returns is going to kick in. They're going to want something new and fresh after a while. MMOs, MOBAs. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, now battle crafting royale. Crafting survival, battle royale. <laughs> the Walking Dead. Battle Modern royale. military shooters have <laughs> oh, gone the way. Thank <laughs> God. Speaking of The Walking Dead, just to like hammer this home, uh, the point, AMC announced that they have another 10 years of Walking Dead stuff they want to make. Yeah, but this and is the like, final Walking Dead game. <laughs> like, who is going to care? You are literally like, you are the zombie franchise now. You will not die. So, it's crazy to me. I don't know if you guys have kept up with Telltale, but I'm wondering when everyone kind of dropped off. Because I diligently played a lot of their library. I loved The Walking Dead season one, went through all of The Wolf yes. Among Us, did the season yep. two. I thought the season two was fine, but it was not good enough to hook me for the next one. And that's when I just started to not pay attention to Telltale news anymore. And I'm um, wondering if there's similar stories here among you guys. I think I stopped I'm... kind of around the same area, except I, my transition was actually more to watching other people play Telltale games because that to me Ooh. seemed more interesting. Yeah, I bet that's actually pretty good fun. It's always fun playing them in a crowded room, which yeah. is a, a fun dynamic to them that I bet not a lot of people have been able to participate in. And so that, but, but... I mean, obviously when you watch someone else <laughs> yeah. play it, then at that point it kind of... I, I hate to say it, but it did become a little bit useless for me to go and, and play the exact same game I, and, and I, receive the exact same experience. I just love the thought of a crowd booing when Clementine <laughs> is disappointed. <laughs> Clementine will remember this. Boo. Oh, oh boo. <laughs> um, I never cared at all about the Walking Dead ones. I have played every other game mm. that they've made and I did not. Walking Dead was like too much, I think loved Borderlands. I absolutely loved the Batman ones. I thought that they were fantastic. I think those are the best uh, ones wow. they did, actually. Oh, this, wow. this must have hit you hard. Jeez. <laughs> so so hard. Yeah. Everyone told me Borderlands was awesome. Never got a chance. It was one of those games where it's like, I have it. I'm going to play it. I'm going to get there. I know I'll get there. And they just you never did. play it now. Like, <laughs> I mean, why not? Right? <laughs> Your time is limited at this point. There's like so many other games now that I'm just like, I got to do this and I got to play that. Oh, the, man. The backlog just happens. And you just like, it gets lost. And you're like, okay, well, one day I'll get there. And it just, time keeps moving on. I, I also glanced over at chat and got reminded that I did play Minecraft story mode and I forgot actually I forgot I played that that's how until it is yeah, right <laughs> yeah it the was oh, Jesse and I was person. like all right it was it was basically a generic Joseph Campbell hero's journey plugged into the Minecraft it universe cute. it was it was, <laughs> it was cute. I, it, but it, I, I, I guess if I was a kid, I would like it better. But I kind of, you know, thing, right? so like, many of those stories by now have gone through me. Well, they've they made like so many of these other games for an older audience, right? Like the mm -hmm. Minecraft one was really their only one that a kid could play, <laughs> right? Sure. So, which is funny for, for a studio dead. who made like cartoony proportion cell shaded characters. Mm. Before you know, they they smear them in, in zombie guts and uh, and and have heartbreaking, tear jerking moments. Woo, woo! I'm gonna try not to remember tell, uh, the Walking Dead too hard. There's, it, it, it's interesting to see where the company went and how they got there, and how just like all things, it has to do with management 
and mm -hmm. behind the scenes stuff and has nothing to do with the quality of stuff they produced and has everything to do with what happens day to day in an office. Uh, I mean, that's just, that's mm -hmm. like business, and man. It sounds like they, business wise, it was a shit show. Yeah. There's, there, there's also just like the economic realities of the, the, the times therein. I, I mean, this is bringing up a lot of conversations about, about unionization and I don't know. I don't, I don't want to get too political, but it's national voter registration day. Uh, uh, workers weren't always treated this shittily. The, 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 the power of unions in the U S is, uh, so incredibly weak more or less because of recessions during the seventies and eighties that never really fill that whole gap that whole back and had history gone slightly differently maybe maybe game developers would have been unionized by this point and maybe that would have made this layoff a little better maybe it would have given them more say in the company maybe they would have been able to make passion projects instead of uh um licensed deals from from the big wigs because <laughs> you can see like some of the most popular games are passion projects not not licensed games it's, absolutely. absolutely they got lucky with some of them and you can and everyone knows the games that eventually become like, oh, the huge success, the passion project. Some corporate thing comes in, and next thing you know, you're on the fifth one. And passion project oh. five, the passioning. <laughs> yeah, you're not. There's no longer any passion in that passion project. It's just like churning them out, and it it sucks because there's yeah. a lot of good stories and a lot of this. It's like the bullshit where they're like, we can't do single player games anymore. No one wants to buy those. Have you played some of the single player games that have come out this year? They're fucking fantastic. People need to like just refocus, re refigure out like what is going on with the gaming industry because right now it's a shit show. I do think that you're right about um, us being on the other side of sort of a spree of episodic games. Like now that we've seen how it affects a company and how it affects us as consumers. I think it really isn't a very good model. Like, no, it isn't. It, it makes Keeping it so that it, sucks. it should be yeah. way cheaper to make it's, games. It's more um, like easily ingestible. Like, I can I can say to myself, "Oh, the next chapter of such and such is out. I've got time to play that." Right? It's it's not going to take long. But at the same time, the number of times that I would like start a stream up and people would be like, hey, so the next chapter of Batman came out like a month ago. Are you going to play that? And I'm like, I didn't know. I had no idea, yeah. right? Like there's there's pros and cons there, but I think overall in the long term, it might just be a big Also, <laughs> one of the things I've always wondered, and it, it drives me crazy thinking about it is if, so imagine you as a company, the setup is you have two options. You either work, 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 release a game, or work, 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 release a game, keep working on the same game, release another part of that game, keep working on the same game, release. Like, I feel like- Such burnout. Internally, in a, in, like company-wise, there is no victory moment. Cause you know, like you're working right. on the game, you you go gold, you launch that shit, you throw a party, like we did it y'all. It's out there in the ether. We've we've achieved our goal. Now let's all group together and let's come up with something fucking new. Let's get crazy with it, right? Yeah. 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 And when you do an episodic game, it's, we released the first part. Let's see what people think. Oh, people thought that sucked or this sucked. Okay, well, all right, let's work on this. And I don't know what that does to morale. I don't know what that does to workflow, but it seems like it isn't good at the end. Cause it, well, like, yeah, you're constantly in, in stages that are supposed to be separate, right? You're in a creation stage with the same game, but you're also in like a, the game is out you know, interacting with community, fixing bugs stage at the same time. Even sure. promotion. I'm sure that's odd. You know what it is? I just, it just, I just, it just hit me. I'm so dumb. It's, <laughs> it's YouTubers who make one-off videos versus YouTubers who do Let's Plays. And a YouTuber <laughs> makes a one yeah. video is like, Episode hey, 500 uh, and blah, 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 playing Minecraft. Yeah, I'm use Gerard because he's in the, like, he's in the office. Like, hey, it's me. I'm the completionist. Here's my video on Mega Man 11, right? And he makes that one it's video done. <laughs> yeah. done and he moves on. And I'm like, Hey, I'm Jesse. And here's my 22 part series on Mega Man 11. That first episode is huge. It's always big. The first like two or three episodes are always good. By the time you get to the last one, it's only people who are really invested stay. Stick and around. Yeah. That's, and that is the exact same way when it comes to making games, you either have a huge release. And of course, on that initial release, people are going to buy it because you're going to see that huge increase and everyone's going to be really happy. And it's going to be like a great few days after launch versus, all right, I released part one. 
Got to go back and edit some more. <laughs> All right, people like this thing. There I go. Oh, people don't like this. I'm going to change the audio on this and like fix this. And you're constantly working on it. Meanwhile, Gerard's already five games done, and I'm still putting out these damn videos. <laughs> and I, it's, I think it's the exact same thing. It wears you down after a while. By the time part four of Walking Dead season 12 is out, who cares at that point, right? Like, you've already lost over half your audience who bought the first one. And because the passion like the from yeah. the creatives behind it. Those, uh, the people who wrote The Walking Dead season one left afterwards, and uh, they made Firewatch. You can tell when playing Walking Dead 2. The, the tears, they still get jerked, but not quite as hard. And I, uh, I, I have another scary observation. When, when I was scanning the LinkedIn profiles of some of these ex-employees for dive. sources, they have... It's really scary how short jobs last in the game industry. They yes. they hop from job to job every two years, and it just boggles my mind that stability, like a long lasting, ten year long, passionate career at a studio, like the the the, the, the kind of careers that bore people, like like Hideo Kojima and and uh, Will Wright and Shigeru Miyamoto, like that kind of stability to both have the freedom to work on what you love and the promise that you will be working on what you love for a while. Right. Uh, uh, is has has a correlation to to those passion projects that are the things that really make the big bucks in the long term. I I, I also hate the thought that I, as a YouTuber, have managed to keep a steadier job than the developers right. that make the games that feed me just, my yeah. information so that I depend on. Uh, yeah, and that's very so much nail on wow. the head. Very much nail on the head. I went when you know, unfortunately, with my recent loss, I that was the first thing I was looking into. I was like, okay, well, now that there's no conflict of interest, maybe I'll look into going into game development. I started looking at moving out to California. Started looking at game studios and started sending out resumes. And then I just saw the turnaround for some things, and sure. they're very it was fast. crazy. And I'm, I'm after just, a game ships, mass layoffs. Right. And you know. I every studio I looked at, some of them had even like changed hands, changed names, got bought and sold within that same period of time that I was sending out resumes. And I'm just like, you know, maybe I should just try and be a streamer. <laughs> like that's, uh, and that's a scary, that's a scary decision to make a about a career is, when you're is also age. itself getting scarier by yes. by the month. Oof. It is. It is very much so, but it's just like when you've, you know, built a, a career over so many years, it's like, what else do I know besides games now at this point? It's, yeah. It's weird. So weird that an internet and personality scary. career has as new and unstable as it is can for many people be more stable than, than going to job for a brilliant computer science degree to work on a video game and then you get laid off two years after you're done working on the game. Especially with franchises Fine. like Game of Thrones or you know, oh. Batman. I mean, it's not like you don't have the material, you know, yes, to, to work from. Hey, everyone out there watching right now. <laughs> are you Are you looking are for you, a lifetime subscription to Jesse Fox channel? Are you between channel? the ages of 13 and 18? And are you currently enjoying a young high school career? Let me tell you about something called college. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. And don't try to do this nonsense as a career but this instead a career involve yourself in math and science you may be able to have a stable career one that pays you very well and has the potential to save the planet and the world and all of us so hey don't be an idiot this shit's crazy at some point <laughs> everyone's gonna stop watching tv and all of that talent in corporate is gonna shift over to the internet and then the competition's really gonna get stiff out it's here started. on the co-optional podcast i remember when i made money being a, a voiceover actress and then celebrities started doing vo's and then basically all voice acting gigs were dead it's like because then all the celebrities are doing vo i think like, Great. pewdiepie just lost his number one spot to an indian music tv network that uh, posts slick corporate-made music videos from India. Uh, you, you can't compete with that as one person. I mean, it's one billion people in India. Exactly, exactly. How do you go up you know, against that? Math. That's how. <laughs> PewDiePie would know if he fucking studied math. He'd Aww. figure it out eventually. Math STEM, math. STEM, STEM. <laughs> yeah, STEM, 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 STEM. It'll save STEM. us all. It'll save us all. You can do it. My son wants Dude. to be a game developer, and I told him, I was like, no, you can go to school and be an engineer. Well, 
I don't yeah, care. Yeah. Computer go, science, go learn engineering. Be an engineer. Those, those are useful. They will need that for everything. If you want to go and be a, a passionate developer on the side or whatever, fine. I will um, I will allow you to do that. Robotics. Will, Get into yeah, robotics. Any of it. How else am I yes. going to fuck a robot if there's no one working on it? <laughs> the, the, the advice I, I hear nowadays that I wish I followed myself was that if you also want to be a journalist, don't get a degree in journalism. Get a degree in the news topic you want to cover and then do journalism classes on the side. That'll make you an expert in, in your particular journalism of your passion rather than uh, uh, a jack of all trades sort of sort of skill set. <clears throat> yeah. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> my degree is useless at this point. <laughs> Drama! <laughs> Drama! <laughs> ta -da, ta -ta 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 Use that degree, Brooke. Do it. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> Am I not entertaining? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I I hope we are. <laughs> I really hope we remain entertaining. My analytics say otherwise. <laughs> <clears throat> um. Yeah. So um, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah so that that was news on Telltale. Uh, mm. A really crappy we, situation. We, we got happier topics coming, right, guys? Um, right, right. I don't know. This is game. Oh, news. that hell for me, kids. We could tell. Mm. Oh, yeah. Here's our. Oh, okay. I don't know. Wait, this is Lay it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All You're right, gonna do it, right. Brooke. Do it. Do okay. it. So I also had to have this explained to me, Jenna. So don't feel like you <laughs> missed the boat too much. I missed but, this. So there's a crown that Toadette puts on that makes Toadette into Peachette, which is basically just like a peach version of Toadette. I have questions. Yes. Okay. Already. Hit me. Does that mean that Princess Peach is the same species as the toads and the toadettes? She just has well, a crown she? on her mushroom head? I mean, she is, right? Because she's like their queen. But her right? anatomy and biology are like completely different. Like, do right, the toad people eat crown. food or do they like stand on a log for a while and like soak it in? Is that I how Peach eats? You're asking too many questions. We need Stop to it. take well, the oh, whole I, crown off of her to know the truth. Right, Stop right. It. That's I, the only I, way to know. <laughs> I feel I, I feel like there's a lot more questions that this revelation opens than than answers. But go on, go on. I was let's, just let's so continue. lost. My 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 Twitter stream. I just I know I was I was doing chemo. I was just looking through Twitter because that's just like the most low key thing I can possibly do, and it became the most not safe for work Twitter feed I have ever had in my entire life. And I follow yeah. some people who you know do take some like I guess sort of revealing stuff. I follow Tara Babcock. She follows me back. We're Good friends, um, so it's like I'm used to my 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 stream every once in a while getting a little naughty or not yeah, safe same. for work. But oh. this was on a massive scale, and I could not understand. So, thank you for so, explaining. I had yeah, no idea so what was happening. Toad, this is all in canon too. Mm -hmm. So Toad can, Toadette can put on a crown and become Peachette. She becomes so, a human character. Yeah. yeah. So somebody made a comic goofing on it, being like, if where Peach like rejects both Mario and Bowser and it's like I don't want either of you and then for some reason Bowser's like we'll get her back and puts on a crown and becomes Bowsette and then it's like Mario and Bowsette like yeah fuck you we don't need you um, yeah. which is hilarious because the implication there is that Bowser would totally fuck Mario which like whatever <laughs> um, um, we, Bowser would fuck everyone we all know that sure. Bowser yeah. is a certain <laughs> shit. but secondly Too if you want to know at the end of the day what it's really about it's the fact that it's like a dirty, sexy peach is what it is. <laughs> it is. No, that's yeah. literally what yeah. it wound up being. It's nothing to do with it being Bowser. At the end of the day, it's nothing to do with it being Bowser. Uh, really. I don't know. I think that's part of the appeal. No, but like what it is, is it's like. It's like a, gr a hot gremlin. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's, basically, yeah. it's basically Peach, a character who's like super prissy and just like, I'm pure, pure. And then <laughs> made the dirty ass person. That's Bowser. And that's literally it. And so it's like. But boobs that people like people are like that's Bowser, but with boobies, and that's no, it. But like then it split, right? Then it was the ones that just look like Peach, but in spikes. And then there was like, no, if it's gonna be a lady human Bowser, uh, oh, I, red I hair. I think the question is if <laughs> if you showed someone who didn't know what Bowsette was a picture of Bowsette, would they think it's Peach in a Bowser costume or Bowser in a Peach costume? No, I thought that it was Peach. In a Bowser costume. So did I. I. Thought, That's what I, I thought. I thought that it was like 
but the reality married Bowser and became Queen Koopa. Like that's what I thought it was at first, and then I was like, oh no, it's literally Bowser. But the the reality of the fictional characters that don't exist is that it's actually Bowser in a peach costume via crown. And I want to point out that. I'm doing some quick Google image searches, and Peach has headwear on in Mario Tennis and Mario Kart and Mario Strikers. Wh- has she taken the crown off? She's the Do- queen. She would never take. She's princess. She's also, princess. Well, time out. If she's princess, who's the queen? Oh, my God. What are the, the king and queen are little toad people, though, oh right? Well, wait, in what's Mario, Mario then? Three, we see the, oh we see my the king God. a lot, right? Yeah, and he's a toad person. Also, uh, uh, first off, the hat thing mm-hmm. proves, yeah. I think, proves my theory from Mario, where oh. when he takes his hat off and throws it on shit, yeah. maybe I'm Mario. Yeah, the hat was Mario. The hat is Peach. But but the Mario, Mario the hat is he's just a plumber. Yeah, right, Mario right. He can take his hat off. No, but he's not Mario. Mario's the hat, the power, but, and the mustache. <laughs> Mario's just a plumber who's like, "Hey, I'm going to work today." He's not a fucking hat. It popped on his head to <laughs> save the world. When he takes I, the hat off, everything else becomes Mario. Thus, when Peach takes her hat off, everything else becomes Peach. This is a love story between uh-huh. two hats. This oh my god! Guys, built around two hats, y'all. Wait. So this whole time, Bowser has known and has been trying to kidnap Peach because he wants yes. to be the princess. Yes. Oh Not because he my wants god. to do it. He just wants. He wants crown. the princess powers because he knows is... that hat is powerful and. And that's why he has to stop Mario, because the Mario hat is the is the yin yang version of the Peach hat. And if they're always ha- if there's a Peach hat, there always has to be a Mario hat. Shit! It's the duality of this universe. Shit. I just don't know anymore if Mario is an intruder in their world who they oh, just yeah. tolerate. It seems like it, because I think he can take his hat off longer than everyone else. I, I think he's just a weird looking human. Yeah, no, Mario is Mario's not anything important. That's like Mario's the ray of this galaxy. Mario's, he doesn't have important family or nothing. He's just there. Is the Mario it, movie canon then? Did Mario get sucked out of Manhattan into a crazy, goofy dinosaur world? Yes, yes but he didn't have a hat when it happened. And when he, when he landed, he got the hat. And the hat is the magical power. The hat is the real Mario. <laughs> the, the, that's what it's super about him. Before, remember the first game, he was just Mario. They were just the Mario brothers. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, the motherfucker has powers? Mm-mm. The, which come from the mushrooms and the fire flowers, no, which, which the there's, there's, the there's some fun allegories. Die. No, 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 no. The reason oh. why he doesn't die ingesting all those mushrooms and flowers is because <laughs> the hat's keeping his ass alive. <laughs> Maybe, uh, I, know, I know a few friends of mine who could, who could use one of those then. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to yeah. take another sip. I enjoy oh. Buet, though, I must admit. When Buet, Buet my that, that, that's my favorite, too. I, I enjoyed yeah. that when I saw that one. I was just like, what is happening? What is so going on? Mario is a goofy-looking plumber who got swo- sw- swooshed into a, a goofy cartoon mushroom world, and he's basically high all the time, but his hat is keeping him from overdosing. Are we seeing the world through his eyes, or is he in this world? Like, how objective is our own viewpoint of these games oh, now that we like, know the secret? Is the game just what he perceives the real world to look oh, like? Oh, and we know the Toads aren't wearing hats because their mushroom caps are their actual heads. Uh, Toad's taken off his hat on numerous occasions. That just means he's dis- like de- decapitating himself halfway. That that's it no, has been he has, confirmed. He has Homer Simpson hair underneath it. It's confirmed. Th- those are nerves. Th- those, are, <laughs> those are those are nerves that oh yeah God. yeah connect um his his feeling receptors. I'm I'm sure it's like a, a fingernail thing, like a ch- a chitinous growth. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I am so sorry. I hate where this conversation has gone. You know what? It's about time we actually. Talked I apologize. About what's going on in Mario? Because <laughs> God a bit of sense. It's about time we as the internet, we as the world got together and said, what the fuck is this game about? Because it doesn't make any damn sense. And we all thought that when, like, you know, Mario and Rabbids got together and made a baby, that that was like, but now this, this is the epitome. This is what we've all been waiting for. Oh, man. 2018, y'all. So what's happening when they go to the Olympics in, like, Rio de Janeiro (laughs) with Sonic the Hedgehog? That's well, when Robotnik I mean, puts on the crown. Oh! <laughs> Whoa. Robotette would be awesome. Yeah. I think anything else. Robotette would be would... like this big. Oh, yeah. She'd but be but tiny, like. Tiny, angry girl. With a big old butt. With a big old butt. And a mustache. And like, like... Robotnik is shaped like this. So, yeah. yeah. No, instead, instead of a mustache, it would be like eyebrows. It would be reversed. Like, meh, like that. 
Yes. You're welcome, Internet. Yes. We're doing this for, we're doing it for you. We're doing what it What happens if you put a crown on one of the Goombas? A Goobet. A, go- a Goobet. <laughs> uh, uh, if you put a crown on a Goomba, um, it's still just a Goomba, but she's got, like, huge tits. <laughs> what about um, one of those little nabbits, like the little rabbit thieves? Someone's already done that. Oh, it's already online. why did I even ask? I'm just going to yeah. open up a tab of Google. Oh, I'm <laughs> yeah, just look up Goombet. Like, I bet it's out there already. What Goombet. I love is that everything that we've talked about in the last oh, like 10 to 15 exists. minutes has been so much weirder than anything that came out of the Death Stranding trailer at E3. <laughs> Hideo oh, Kojima at it. this moment is yeah, just like, but... I'm not the weirdest thing on the internet right now. <laughs> they released that new uh, Tokyo game show footage and I was just like, yes. I don't know. I still don't know. <laughs> I still don't know. Uh, I, I guess you fight a thing, which yeah. means I guess oh, there might be combat. Oh, there's combat. I don't know. Uh, uh, there, All right. Didn't show it. Thing is, I gotta out myself. Baker showed up and was like, "Hey, here's a monster," and you're like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> okay. I I actually I'm gonna start blacking out Death Stranding stuff to prevent like any minor spoilers. Um, at this point, I think we're like it's still a good year, year and a half out, and at, at this point, I actually prefer to not watch trailers of games so that I can see all this stuff for the first time when I'm actually playing it. And so, believe it or not, as like big of a Metal Gear and Kojima fan as I am, I, I actually, you're just gonna have to describe this one to me because I, I want to come into it fresh. Uh, the, the game itself? Yeah, you yeah, you said there the might have been fighting. You want, uh, no, there was no fighting. There was no oh, fighting. oh, never mind, never mind. The game show footage literally is Norman Reedus walking up to someone who I think Troy Baker voices, question mark? Yes, and you're like, right. Looks very similar, and he has like a weird skull thingy going off this face. Skeletor. And then, just, <laughs> yeah. and then he pulls off a mask and is like, hey, I have an accent for some fucking reason, and I'm talking oh, shit to you. It's like some and, real and, exaggerated Japanese voice acting accent. And then, then he's like, all right, then I guess I'll slam my fist <laughs> to the ground and summon monsters. And like a bunch of like... Ooh. It's like the world of goo. goo. <laughs> and, then, and then he like does he's the dead. anime like, Hoo! and he puts it up in the air. And then this monster appears and roars and that's all of it. And I was like, okay, well, what does this mean? Does this mean that we have to dot? Like, is this, are there combat mechanics in this game? Is this one of those things where... There's no combat. You just have to like hide from this beast. We he learned makes like nothing. a slime lion. Yeah, yeah like a, it's like the Aslan the of this game at all. It makes I'm, no sense. I'm just gonna have to imagine it at this point and be uh, dumbfounded and impressed and hopefully have unspoilt joy at what this slime lion I can only imagine right now. It's like an Aslan oh. tentacle monster. All you Ooh. need to know is I'm gonna ruin your childhood with that. <laughs> Wars is like really cool. Like it, like. It's it's definitely a Kojima game. Everything about it is cool and slick and looks great, but it's also a Kojima game where the last one a fucking fire whale showed up. So, whatever. You know, and you it have, turned out to have like nothing to do with the game. Zero to do with the game. A fire whale was, appeared and a, that was a, it. a brief metaphor and it was a I I yeah, thought I, I thought initially when we saw like the aesthetic when we very first got the very first teaser for Death Stranding. I think it was at like the Game Awards show like a year mm-hmm. or two ago. Years ago yeah. And when I saw like the aesthetic, I was just like, you know, the whale stuff. I was just like, oh my God, I love that kind of aesthetic. I was like, yes, please let this be the game. And it totally wasn't what the game is ending up being as far as we know. We'll find out when we actually play the thing. Like if anything, love him or hate him, Kojima is is an excellent trailer director. A a superb trailer director. He's cinematics wise, like through all the games that they've made, all the Metal Gear, cinematically, they're amazing. Gameplay wise, sometimes they're like hit and miss, and story wise, sometimes they're all over the place. But like the cinematic moments, the dude knows what the fuck he's doing, and they're always entertaining. Yeah. I, it's just uh, one of those things where it's gonna be hit or miss. Who I've knows? been I've been streaming MGS three, and and as old as that game is, there there are still many many bits of of that game that still look beautiful to this day, and it's all because of like composition and framing. It's like when he chooses to simulate a shaky cam, how the how the characters like do their actions in front of the camera. There's one scene where yeah. where young Ocelot gets blasted away by a jet engine, and you like see him raise his hand, and light just blooms over the whole frame, but not long enough to look like jarring or weird. Just long enough to get the action uh, sure. conveyed. There's there's brevity to his stuff, and in uh visuals but sure as hell not in dialogue yeah it's 
<laughs> the, I really wish they would just be like, you know what? Let's hire a team. Let's hire, let's have a team come in. Kojima <laughs> as narrative director on a Telltale style game, like <laughs> Police Knots 2018, would be so freaking great. Snatcher wow. 2020. Ooh, right in time for the cyberpunk dystopia. Yeah, I'm. This will be this will be real interesting to see what this game turns out to be because God help me, everything that I've read, I've seen, it, it's genuinely like twelve to thirteen separate points that in standalone games would be great, all in one game, and it, I'm so confused how that's gonna work me out. Too. Like there's like oh well mechanically don't you understand you're traversing with this little baby and you have it's like okay so what's the baby do? <laughs> tell you anything about the baby but also rain speeds up time what yeah. what does that mean oh okay like like what what does that what does that mean we will figure it out in due oh, time these so. mysteries will be solved just just like, patience patience one trailer that, shows like, us things that are like invisible and it's just like are we stealthy are we what what are we doing are we like the pizza delivery man of the future are we <laughs> trying to be you know like massive stealth and you know just be ninja or you know what's what's happening i it's it is literally like it's a different game every trailer that we see of death stranding it's yeah, a different game it still and it looks all in one like all there's some one. kind of hide and seek going on which yeah, you can make does, full the games dude out disappears. of just fine no it, it it does make more, a little no. more sense just very minute more sense every trailer that we see cuz it's like it was oh it's like a horror game but it's not a horror game i don't know <laughs> what <sighs> I just love that he has so many ideas. Maybe he doesn't even know what the game is about at this point. I, I just hope he has an editor. I'm just really excited to see him <laughs> not get bogged down by by all the Metal Gear Solid sequel baggage because all the Kojima standalone games are like fine. MGS one and three are f of course fan freaking tastic. But don't sleep if if you're listening and you haven't played Police Knots or Snatcher. Don't sleep on those. They're like <laughs> they're 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 like really fun Kojima isms, but in a actually more friendly format for how long he loves to go on with. With exposition, right? <laughs> Kojima friendly format. Oh man, it's like what is that even? Um, all right, so I just wanted to uh, stop here and uh, let you guys know that this episode of the Co-Optional Podcast is sponsored by Squarespace. What? Yes! Yay! And you can go over to www.squarespace.com/co-optional and save ten percent off of your first order. I'm putting that URL in the description right here, just so that way you guys can see it. Um, I wanted to do kind of like a live version of the ad instead of doing a pre-recorded version of the ad because I had a recent experience that I'd like to relay. Um, one of my side hustles used to be that I was a graphic designer and I used to build websites. So me and my PHP experience and my HTMLs back in the day, I would go around to like all the dental offices and all of the oh. HOAs and I would build websites. And then eventually this thing called WordPress came along and it became so much easier and faster to build websites. <laughs> Themes <laughs> came about, made my job so much easier. But now Squarespace has kind of like taken over to a different level to where my HOA has ousted me <laughs> in favor of Squarespace because it's cheaper for them and easier to maintain. Um, they don't have to message me with anything because uh, Squarespace, it's that easy to use. So yeah. if you are building anything from you, know, you need a domain, you you know, need to create a website with beautiful templates. If you make a product <laughs> and you need to sell it, hey, Squarespace has got you. If you need to do an email marketing campaign, Squarespace has got you. Um, so take it from me, someone who lost their side hustle. <laughs> Squarespace is that user friendly that people who don't even have anything more. I mean, these these people in my neighborhood still have DSL. <laughs> Damn but they are savvy for Squarespace. So there you go. So I just wanted to let you guys know that if you do want to purchase a domain or a website, squarespace.com slash co-optional, save 10% on your first order. Or if you go to um, make your purchase, just put co-optional in the promo code section and it will give you that 10% off. And once again, thank you guys at Squarespace for sponsoring us. Squarespace, make it. Yay. Yay. <laughs> All right, so with that out of the way, do you guys need a break or do you guys want to power on through some games? I, I'm going to power through. I got I to gotta run to the bathroom if that's cool. Okay, we'll go ahead and go to a quick music break and we will be back in just a few minutes. Thank you guys so yep. much. You were tuned into the Co-Optional Podcast and we will be right back. 
Welcome, welcome back to the Co-Optional Pod... Dap. <laughs> pod dap? Dab. Fe- the pod tab. The pod fe- tab. Fe- featuring Dex Bonus doing her thing. <laughs> I just really uh, wanted to see Jesse pull a face at me, and he did, so it's fine. Hmm. All right. Is that what this is about now? <laughs> just giving me cool faces? It's all, yeah, it's Everything's about, about disappointing you. you and seeing the evidence of it, yeah. The show's now all about Jesse. All of my break music today has all been dedicated to Jesse Cox. I'm just oh, like, you. Nice, nice, nice. Final Fantasy. Some Final Fantasy. Mm. Oh my gosh, oh, now the chat music. is exploding in, in Dex Dab. <laughs> oh. I'm so glad Anyways. someone gifted me that sub so that way I have that emoji or that <laughs> emoticon or whatnot. So Hope games. You get good use out of it. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. For sure. For sure. Games, games, games. What have we been playing, I guess, is the the question to be asking. It always um, is. I know, has, right? Has anybody dived into the new Rusty Lake game? I have. I finished chapter one, and I am so glad so far, because I haven't done chapter two yet, that there is no glass measuring BS yet. Yeah. Um, I finished it. Is and it Rusty Lake or is it Cube Escape? It's yes. Cube Escape, it's Cube but Escape. it's the same, same universe. Right, of course, of course, of course. Um, <clears throat> I didn't realize until I was most of the way through chapter one that they also released a movie alongside yep. of it, like yes. a 20 minute movie. Inside of the movie, there are five <laughs> different puzzles to find that apply to the game. And so now I'm gonna just die trying what? to find all of them. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. But it's a beautiful mess, just like all of the other oh, yeah. games in that world. Good. They're Good. They're great, yeah. I um, I love the Rusty Lake games so much. Me too. They're so good. The aesthetic I, in general yeah. is my thing. I just I I, love them. I don't think <clears throat> I know what this is. <clears throat> let me let me let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, go for it, Jesse. <laughs> Pitch me. The Rusty Lake games and Cube Escape games, they both from the same universe, take place uh featuring uh, the central location of the Rusty Lake, which is this weird ass lake that um you visit through the course of many games over many centuries and many different time periods. And all of the games are related and all of the games are weird and creepy and strange. <laughs> and there are many characters that flow between all the different games. And the more you play, the more you learn about all the different characters, but each game's out of order. Each game only reveals a little bit of stuff. And uh, some games feature humans and some games feature animal people. And some <laughs> games, like it's totally bizarre and weird, but for some reason, the more you play, the more you're like, oh, this makes sense now. You get sucked I in. I know who this character is. And I know why that mm. character is a, is a crow man. And I know why that's the... Oh, yeah. It all starts yeah. to come together. And the craziness starts to seem a lot less crazy. And you're like, oh, shit. Yeah, it's good. It's super Intriguing. much. Intriguing. But then yeah. it scares the crap out of you when it, like, you know, the, the frizzy you know dude with the eyes like comes out <laughs> just like oh, yeah, it's, slight it's, jump scare i mean it's yeah. not crazy it's scary but scare it's, puzzle it's delightful game. jump scare <laughs> are these flash games or do they use some other uh they started API? off as flash games i don't know if they still use flash to make them I yeah don't they're on but... steam and stuff and most of them are free and uh, yeah, some of them are on ios too so they're they're pretty like cap friendly as well most of the cube escape games are on ios mm-hmm. uh i don't know that they made it to steam but this There's, one is on Steam. Yeah, this yeah. one's on Steam because it came out with a movie at the same time. Which was mm. different. That I mean, I do believe this is the first time they've done that angle for this series of, of games. Yeah. But it's, I, it's... I love the aesthetic of these games. Mm. I, I don't know exactly what it is. Is it like the fact that it's sort of like Kubrick-esque in The Shining in a weird way? <laughs> or is Very it strange. is it just because like the animals, like if you, it, there are like little tidbits in there too, like... Um, or little Easter eggs, like if you continue to click on something, then eventually someone will like decapitate themselves or they'll lose a limb and the blood will be dropping or just random things with different animals will happen. It's like you'll show back up and that same animal that you just saw a minute ago now has a severed head and you can take like one of its bodily organs and mix it up with something else and then that fits a puzzle piece. I know it sounds weird. (laughs) I think the first one that set us on this course, I think Dodger and I played was Rusty Lake Hotel which is basically a game where you play as a guy coming to a hotel 
with a bunch of animals and your objective is to serve these animals dinner, but you have to serve them themselves. So yeah, so each night you have to kill a different one of the guests and serve them to the other guests. And it's effed it's up and weird, but like once you got in on that, because then at the end, the ending literally has nothing to do with what you just did. And we were like, the fuck? And that's where it like suddenly you're going, people are like, oh yeah, there are eight other games. It's like. Yeah. And Jesse, this new one connects mm-hmm. directly to Rusty Lake Hotel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It totally it's does. So you have to only play it. Cool. $1 on Itch.io. Yeah, go for it. It's they're really fun and and some of them actually do take a, a decent amount of time. I won't say that some yeah, of them are really not, quick. I, that was my next question about how long do they usually take? Three hours, maybe? Yeah. Four hours. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like a great afternoon, like a great creepy late afternoon, early evening game. Yeah. yeah. It's a little it's, bit I get jazzed every time a new one of these games comes out. I'm Me like, too. oh fuck yes. <laughs> so just That's so my next stream. The next stream I do is gonna be this game. I'm really excited for it's it. Really Let me know when you're gonna do it because I love watching you play these games. Oh, me because because you get to see me suffer through the puzzles that you thought were easy. <laughs> I don't think they're as hard in this one, if I'm honest. I don't think they're as hard in this game. That is the one thing I will say. You say that. Because most of the other ones, I found myself at least at one point having to like look up a walkthrough to finish like one puzzle. Most of the time it's like, the measuring ones where you have to think like three or four steps ahead in order to measure out different right. um, things in beakers or whatever. But... You know, a couple times, like the bug one in in one of them, where like the bugs had to be different colors or something like that, and you had to match sure. certain things up in a puzzle. But most of the time, I'm uh-huh. I'm pretty good at puzzle games. But this one, I so far I've not had to look anything up, and that is unusual for me in one of these games. Usually, it, it'll at least be one time where I have to look something up, and I haven't had to this time. So either they're Chapter- just more intuitive. Chapter yeah. two had a couple of moments where I was like, "What the fuck?" But I also uh-huh. I never had to look anything up. <laughs> But yeah, I think I think all of I'm I'm the same. All of these games have at least one moment where I'm like, I just don't think the way I, that they think. <laughs> yeah, like what what is going on? And most of the time, it's like way more obvious than you. it's almost always yes. an overthinking thing. Yes, yeah. I almost missed like the TV channel one in this one um, because I was thinking like too many spaces ahead i guess and i'm just like sure. oh it can't be that i obviously need to do something else and it's like no actually it is that obvious okay mm-hmm. yeah but i, I love they them because they they just because the way they all come together and um it, it knows what it is you know it's not overly pretentious or anything they're not sure. like out to get you like oh we are so high brow and you know <laughs> they don't price themselves you know based on oh we have a following and we're like sort of like cult favorites they've kept the price relatively around the same point and i appreciate that from you know it's like a, a game developer. a little thing that hmm. i appreciate has stayed the same for all of the games okay. is that it's always the same dude who does all of the voices regardless yes. of men yes. or women yeah always like there will there will be like a mother and a daughter and a son and a father and you can tell they're all like the same ma- there's maybe two dudes who do all of the voices <laughs> and it's there's just something that like really it it feels like it wouldn't be a rusty late game if suddenly there was well, a different it's, voice it's, yeah. for some reason i think it, it it adds to the mystique of the fact that like they always seem like you're getting the story third person like right like through someone, someone else, else. Yeah, it's telling you this weird ass shit that happened and you're just experiencing it. Especially the last one when it was sort of like Wicker Man ish kind of yeah. things. We were like, the fuck? I love that kind of stuff. It's very cool. Yeah. But yeah, George, you should play all of them. They're great. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting like a real nice and comfy, nostalgic, uh, uh, high quality flash game. It definitely has that, that like old school Newgrounds vibe to it. Yeah, where, like, it does. Things were off the rails and it wasn't all hardcore animated porn and, and like before when they were just starting and it was like here's this weird game i made and you're like that yeah. was weird and, and there were like some unique weird artists who would make stuff you literally would not and could yeah. not see anywhere else <laughs> yeah right? and then could not unsee once you <laughs> yeah. played it or watched it yeah uh, I, I love the rusty late games they're pretty good mm. um i've been playing some uh shadow of the tomb raider which i'm not oh how is it how is that i am not thrilled if i'm honest no. with you oh, I, i've heard yeah. much more of the same or? uh yeah and i okay so here's here's my beef let me change the title okay. here of this here's my here's my beef Bumbers. um 
So for some reason, the open world feels weird this time. And I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because of playing Spider-Man. I don't know. Like, Which does that make any sense at all? Spider-Man's yeah. I mean, that supposed just to be one of the weird. good ones. I mean, because in obviously in, in <laughs> I, I I hate that I'm like, hey, let me talk about this game I'm playing, but I'm also going to talk about this other game I've been playing a bit. Of. That's the point of this podcast, um, though. Yeah, so I guess. Can Can Lara Croft <laughs> like shoot webs through the open world? No, but Aww. like, okay, so like in Spider-Man, you feel sort of like you're you have the illusion of open world but clearly you're supposed to you know go take a certain path um mm. and it, it i guess it still feels more open than the new tomb raider game which is weird because yeah. it's an open world game but it just, it just feels so led through the nose in a weird way the narrative i would say is much weaker than the previous two installments and this mm. one you're eventually like oh lara's actually you know the tomb raider now it is so <laughs> she's finally yeah, the tomb she's raider. grown up yeah yeah i mean the idea is you know the first episode you know you you know she is innocent sort of you know getting thrust into this you know there's character development there's drama there's you know and and i feel like you get that a little bit more with this latest installment act one yeah you, there's a little bit of character development but i wouldn't say a ton it's so exploration based and there's not a lot of combat and when your skill tree is literally like <laughs> half combat when there's not a lot of combat in that game that feels really unsatisfying and useless like it mm. shouldn't it shouldn't shouldn't have been that disjointed it just i don't know it felt weird it, it's the only other thing i could think of to because these games are are long this was like a 15 hour long game and this is the third one of the the set of three since the reboot of the franchise. And so it's it's like going to see the Lord of the Rings movies. Like when they came out, you know, you know that you're in there for like a three hour long stint, but you see like the cast mm. list and you know them from their previous work. So you're going to give it a go. You read the books. So, you know, so I feel like that's the same thing. We played the previous Tomb Raiders. The franchise is strong. You know, we have a little bit of a passion for it. We're willing to sit through this. The ending is so much of a letdown. <laughs> That I just, I felt like I'd watched all three Lord of the Rings movies back to back to back in a movie theater, walked out and was like, huh, so that's how that ended. And that's how I felt at the end of Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I just, I was so enchanted with the first installment of the reboot. The The writing was great. The character development was decent. I, I enjoyed the narrative a lot. And this one just fell really flat for me. I, I cannot honestly recommend it. <laughs> Which just There's, sounds weird. I'm sure tons of people yeah. are like praising it. I just I can't. Yeah, yeah, I heard a lot of people say the ending's really awful. And then apparently there was an ending on the uh, disc that was edited out on the day one patch. So yeah. There was another ending that they <laughs> accidentally put in, and Wait, then what? <laughs> yeah, there was another. End apparently, they had multiple endings to the game. <laughs> Because uh, they couldn't decide what they wanted the ending to be, which says a lot about the storytelling process for this one. And so then they oh day God. one patched out the ending with another ending that's worse than the patched so out ending. Does that mean if you have an, a, a fresh new Laura Croft Shadow of the Tomb Raider disc and you, and you pop it in and anything. you get There's a different another. ending than people who who might have their consoles connected to the internet? Yes, and those people have already started posting that ending online. This is how people know, and they're like, this ending's way better. Yeah. It was? So, mm -hmm. At least more what satisfying. It made more sense. I, yeah, so I... Oh, um, damn it. Uh, I, yeah, I, I thought the first one that was, like, really good because they gave it the, like, the, the urgency of, like, this is Laura Croft becoming the Tomb Raider. Like, this <laughs> right. is For the this third one. time. Right, well, but this in the first one, yeah, in the yeah. first one, it's it's different. It's it's it was fresh. Yeah, it in tells the a story, one. and so it's like, okay, this is fun. I like where this is going. Everything about this, like, I want to protect Laura and like also kick ass, right. right? And the second one was like, oh, this was fun, but it's still but more of the was, same. Yeah, it's like we're starting <laughs> to regress, and this one I haven't even like, I haven't even yeah. thought of playing it yet. And then when I read all the reviews, I was like, maybe we'll hold off. So I just yeah, sucks, I, I regret putting that many hard. hours in it. I I do, and I I hate to say that I really do because I 
I thought this was such a, an important reboot to a franchise. I thought it was much yep. needed. I, I really did enjoy the first one a lot. I even went back, even after completing the first one, and replayed some of the first one because I enjoyed it. It's that doesn't a happen good, a lot. It's a good game. It's a game you should, like, put on a list to play. It's mm -hmm. solid. It's I feel... I feel I just feel so bad for that studio. I know Montreal has so many great ideas that they can execute super well on, but they got to they got to put up with so much shit from their publisher. Well, that's when I, they went with Crystal Dynamics and that that's, that's I don't oh. know. It's it's a bit of a, a difference in in style there. And I'm not sure if that is you know part of the reason why this one felt different, but I feel like they came along in the game like two thirds of the way through. So I, I don't know how much of an impact that actually made. It just, I don't know, it just felt really flat. It's just like, we did all of this badass stuff in the first one, yeah. and what, we learned how to repel in this one. Ooh, <laughs> it's awesome. We're, we're slightly more stealthy. We can hold our breath underwater. <laughs> Mind Whoa. blown. Whoa, <laughs> Holy and, and I understand. All that training finally paying off. I know, it's, I understand, <laughs> like, you know, it, you know, it's Tomb Raider, you know, it is supposed to be more about exploration. I understand that, but... I just, I did not feel satisfied. And at the end of the day, you know, if you don't enjoy a game, you don't enjoy a game. And that's why I didn't really enjoy it. Sorry it if also, you guys enjoyed it, but I didn't. <laughs> games like this, it also comes down to the story they're telling. Mm. And I felt like the second one, the story was was like, eh, right? it was very mediocre. Um, and that, that, you know, the fact that the a lot of people are saying the story in this one isn't that great. I think that, when you're creating a game like this, the story, gameplay and all that shit's fine, but if there isn't a driving force to keep people doing the gameplay that you have created for them, at the end of the day, it's not going to it's not gonna sit well with the gamer. And the, the best example at the moment, before I would have said God of War, the new God of War is <laughs> incredible. But now, 100%, Sony killing it with these first-party titles. Um, oh, yeah. Spider-Man yeah. is a game that... Mechanically, swinging through the, the, the streets is awesome. But, of course, after a while, some of the mechanics of that, like, all right, yeah, I'm doing this. I get it, right? But the story they've crafted in this game, I'm not going to spoil a damn thing. All I will simply say is it's one of those things where you as the player, especially as a Spider-Man fan, because shit's been done over and over and over and over again. Everyone gets it. From moment one, they're like, all right, we're not going to talk about, we're not going to have, like, a Peter Ben thing no we're origin gonna, story yeah like like we're not gonna do all the things you expect and so what happens is every step along the way you are like oh i know i see where this is going i know what's about to happen and then they're just like gotcha bitch yeah. and then the next thing oh. they're like and they keep doing it over it and it happens oh, like I love four or five times in the game where you're just like get subversion the thing, get that over and over and over yes, again. Yes, please. I want to play it so big. Yeah. And every time you're just like, oh my god, I, I see where this is going. By the time that it eventually does some of the things that you expect to happen, mm -hmm. you're so hyped for that moment because of everything else that's happened. It's They've been building. you over story-wise that by the end of it, the last 20 minutes of that game are phenomenal. It's like a legitimate, it is it is one of the best Spider-Man experiences like if you were huge into Spider-Man 2 kind of shit where you were like, that's the peak. I think this is a better story. <laughs> I think this is a better story than that. And it is like from top to bottom, everything about the game is stunning. And when you walk, like when you beat it and you go through the ending and you get all the little like cut scenes, by the time you hit the last post credit scene, you're like, they got me. I'm in for the next one. I'm ready. <laughs> like, they hit you with that moment of just like, all right, I don't even fucking care where we're going. Let's do this. And it's phenomenal. It's a it's a masterpiece of storytelling, mm -hmm. and a game that like is fun, but is only made that fun by the fact that everything you're doing is constantly like witty and sweet, and at the same like it's everything about Peter Parker and Spider Man that you know and love, and it isn't like you're not an asshole. You're just like a nice guy swinging through the city. It's like a funny dude. Yeah. Yeah. It, oh, everything about it's delightful. I love that game. It's also, so how like cathartic and satisfying <clears throat> is it that everyone is loving the story in the Spider-Man game better than the Spider-Man movies? <laughs> because they, can, they can tell you a story. <clears throat> it's just like a book where they can take their time and unfurl the story over. Because by the time the story moments that are like subvert everything, you know, they've built up to that point. Well, you deserve like you feel like it's a deserved moment 
where everything from it, it's like a game where where you start at point A is nowhere even close to where you end up at point B. Like so much shit happens along the way where you're just like, all right, all right, and and you have to do that because at the end of the day, the the combat mechanics are just Arkham, yeah. right? Oh the, man, the swinging is just. <laughs> you moving through the open world so you can get J. Jonah Jameson shouting at you or talk to Yuri or have MJ call you. Like it's excuses to have dialogue. And it's very much like the open world bits of uh, uncharted where Nathan and his brother would like just be talking while they're driving and shit. It's, it's just exposition stuff, but the way they flesh it all together, the way they have random shit pop up, like, Oh yes, please call. There's some shit right happening. And then if you ping like your spidey senses, it's like, Oh fuck, it's behind me. So you just turn around. You're like, I gotta do this. And then what they did is they took all that bullshit of like, yeah, there's a bunch of collectibles and things to find all over the world. They're like, oh, but if you do those, it isn't just for your completionist shit. You can use them to get new suits and they're fucking uh, awesome. Yes. And you're like, delightful. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A, a lot of this game sounds like exactly the, the secret formula you need to make that kind of open world collectathon completionist game actually really fun to go down the yeah, checklist. Make, that, make yourself look cooler in a game a, like that. That's like all the reason you need to collect one shit. One of the most <laughs> important things that so many games get wrong is like giving the player a fun method of transportation from A to B across the missions in an open world and and swinging across rooftops. That's that's probably something that, that takes a good long while to get old, if I remember how fun it was in Spider-Man 2. All I will simply say I feel say like it's is, better here. I feel, I feel like oh, it is. I really okay. want to check it out. I'm just waiting for like a good solid free weekend where I can turn off the phone, turn off the lights, make a bunch of like burritos in the fridge on Friday <laughs> so I can eat them throughout the weekend without having to cook. I'm, yeah. I'm saving it for that kind of that kind of moment in my life. So, like even the more ridiculous aspects of, of the game, because there are some towards the end where you're just like, oh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> you don't even care because it's like super fun to do. And mm -hmm. the swinging, the web swinging, it never gets old, even when you have to do the mundane shit of, like, chase these birds for this dude. And you're like, oh, <laughs> you still do it. You are. It doesn't. It isn't, like, aggravating. You don't want to not do it. You're like, are there uh, oh, pizza I'm deliveries? This guy. You know, there's there's all sorts of no pizza deliveries, but mm, okay. there are things like there are side quests and missions where it's, like, really stupid shit that Spider-Man gets involved in. And you're just like, yeah, because Spider-Man's not like it takes place in a world that you recognize because it's new york but they have everything that like, the avengers building is there right <laughs> <laughs> it's marvel new york yeah yeah everything <laughs> that is there. cute <laughs> it's marvel new york and, and all the oh. like you can go see matt murdoch's law office like everything is a landmark and you take photos of stuff um how you, is the scale of the city like is it smaller than new york or is it closer to the life-size thing um from this is what's amazing about this game you can like go down to the ground and like walk on the streets and yes. like hey citizens and, like talk to people and and walk on the streets and everything seems huge mm -hmm. but the minute you take to the sky it shrinks down like like but that's uh, true of the, manhattan in general shrinks. though isn't it i mean yeah yeah like everything so around you is massive mm -hmm. but when you soar through the sky it still takes you a while to get places if you just uh uh swing but because there's a fast travel system that literally is, if you fast travel, it's Spider-Man on the subway and like a little weird scene plays. Like one time, it's him looking at his phone, like a guy sleeping on his shoulder or Spider-Man like in the corner of the subway all pouty. Like it's just like <laughs> weird scenes. They're great. That's really cute though. God, this yeah. game sounds wholesome and, and just <laughs> sweet. Sounds really wholesome. Yeah. yeah. And, and again, like I said, you know what to expect because it's Spider-Man. Spider-Man's been done a million times. But... The things they add and the way they're taking it and the shit they put in changes stuff enough where you're like, I did not see that coming. And then the things you did see coming, you're like, I can't believe they did that. Right. And it's, you know, it's very, very good. It's well put together. It is a solid. The um, Yuri Lowenthal, who I believe is Spider Man, gives it like all the actors are incredible. In, like in both are, his takes, his yes. exhausted and his oh, calm takes. I didn't, can I tell you that I didn't realize that? Which means it, it works. <laughs> it, it, took me, it took me until, I don't know, several hours in the game while swinging. I was like, mm -hmm. time out. You, you, you <laughs> wouldn't <laughs> notice that unless you had to like retry it and hear it again, which, ooh, yeah, that is so, so, so good. Yeah, it's incredible. So for people who don't know, 
when he has dialogue, when he's going through, like, between major plot points, he talks with everyone that is, like, his friends. He, like, talks with MJ. He talks with, with Yuri. He talks to all these different characters. And if you're standing still, they're having the conversation, but he's, he's, he's like, just talking normally. If you start swinging, you'll notice during the conversation, he's like, okay, so we got to do this. And he's, like, <laughs> moving. And, his, and, I, and I was like, has he always done that? And Chad's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> separate lines of dialogue for everything. I was like, get the fuck out. <laughs> that's I how think, immersive uh, it is. It, the, and that's, the, it's great. The term the best friends are using these days is quadruple A to describe the like sheer amount of polish you're seeing in these these Sony first parties these yep. days. It's like, it's on a that's whole nother cool. level. I cannot wait to, to check this, these things out. Yeah. The only thing I can ever fault really about a game like this is the combat because I'm kind of Arkham done to death, but everything else is so good that it, and, and I totally agree to Jesse's point, side quests are, I, I hate pointless side quests. I've always mm -hmm. hated pointless side quests. Like you're going to make an, an open world or an illusion of an open world, give me a reason, a, a tangible reason. And this game Girl. totally does. And because they do the story so well, um, and it's like earlier, <laughs> you know, how people are liking this more than the movies. Well, you're in a movie theater for about two and a half hours. You can only cram so much content into two and a half hours to make Spider-Man endearing to you or make the characters believable, make the environment immersive, you know, as a viewer. But a game like this, you, you actually spend more hours in and it is so immersive. Things like the exhaustion, just how the voice actors played off of each other. It just, it all fits together in a really cohesive way that the combat didn't seem as, as much of a sticking point for me. Yeah, as, I'm, as I'm, I initially I'm never thought a fan it would. of Arkham Combat. I suck at it. I Same. know that I suck <laughs> at it because it just frustrates me because when you are like going to, like Arkham Combat is literally based on dodging. Like, yeah. Doing damage is secondary. And so in my mind, if I'm trying to unleash a devastating combo, I'm like, oh, I'll finish the combo, then I'll dodge. It's like, right. no, no, no. You stop your combo and you dodge immediately. And my brain just it doesn't click that way. And so I just get frustrated with myself and the game. Same. That just happens. But for some reason, this shit, like, doesn't matter at all. No. Like, it, it has that vibe of it. Another thing, this game does not take itself seriously at all. <laughs> For as Which serious as we are shit is long overdue for like a super high budget quadruple A first party exclusive. Yeah, Deadpool for as serious as, as some of the plot points are and some of the major things that happen in this game, the overall vibe is it's Spider Man and he's like a witty banter dude, and the world he's in is over the top. And so the fact that they made uh, J. Jonah Jameson said like he quit the newspaper and he doesn't work in the Bugle anymore, and now he has his like uh, like a radio show and he just like <laughs> shit talks Spider Man. And there's one of my favorite moments in this game is there's it's just like a random conversation when he like pops on the radio. Um, he's like talking about how there was a at one point in the story there's a party and people are dressing up as Spider Man and the villains, and and he's like freaking out about it. He's like people are dressing up as this vigilante like that's so disrespect like this is terrible. And he's like caller, what do you think? And this guy calls you. He's like, yeah, um, my girlfriend dresses up as Spider Man. I think that's pretty hot. And he's like. <laughs> It's, it's, <laughs> it's spider it it's yeah pretty much it's so good and everything about it is just like there are moments of of like real happiness and silliness in a game that sometimes you're like all right well we're now in a state of like police we're now in a police state and shit's getting like you know crazy shit's going down they're like J. Joan jameson's on the case he'll make this funny in a minute and you're like all right okay yeah it's cool. awesome it sounds like a great game. I know Sam absolutely loved it. So, Sam, stop playing Yakuza. What? <laughs> Sam, pl Sam played all of Spider Man. I think before he started playing Yakuza. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> uh, I was like, I missed that gap happening. Wow. Mm, he's a madman. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of like what else I've been playing. Um, I. Uh, sorry, what? No, go ahead. Go. Oh, I was gonna say I. I uh, have been playing Lamplight City. Have any of you guys How played that? that? Mm -mm. It's really oh, good. Lamplight it's City. like a an old, it feels very like old LucasArts point and click. Yes, I've seen, uh, yeah, yeah. It looks, it looks like it's basically LucasArts Cthulhu. Is that the idea? Cthulhu, no. No? Ooh, what is no. it then? Um, so the, the concept of it is uh, you and your partner, you guys have been detectives for, you know, 
30 years or whatever, and you've always been partners, and you're investigating um, a break-in that's been happening at a florist that's like in the middle of the slums. And um, you're in kind of like an alternate timeline that's very like steam based. Like the okay. technology is like going in a different direction. Um, and you go to this florist and the lady is like, yeah, some guy has been like breaking into my shop, taking flowers and leaving money. So he's paying for the flowers, but he's breaking in to like take these flowers, right? And uh, it's been happening consistently. And we're like, okay, we'll figure out how he's been breaking in and we'll like lie and wait and see if this guy shows up. Sure. Of course, the dude does show up um, and he is all in shadow and he's got like a, a mastermind villain voice, right? And um, our partner chases after him onto the roof. So we follow and we have a scene where it's like, this all happens like like right at the beginning of the game. Um, but we have a scene where the the mastermind like has our partner at knife point, right? And uh, and we're trying to figure out what to do. And it it can go one of two ways, but the the beginning is a is a non choice that has been confirmed. It like what's going to happen will happen regardless. Um, but essentially, you like jump a little bit forward in time, and your partner has died, and you are being haunted by him. <laughs> And wow. you're trying, like, and it's unclear if it's Man. if you're actually being haunted by him or if you're if you're like kind of going insane and you're imagining him because you like feel so guilty about what happened to him that night. That's cool uh, shit. Yeah, and so you go through like different cases, like solo cases, kind of like the Sherlock Holmes games. You go through cases where it, there's like the small case that's going on, but there's also the longer arc of what happened to the guy from that night? Can we find him? If I find him, will Bill, my best friend that died, will he like leave me alone so I can live my life? <laughs> right? Like, um, and and also just sort of trying to get your own life together because you're a mess. You're an absolute mess, and your wife is like, "Honey, you gotta like get your shit under control because you look like <laughs> not taking care of yourself at all." Right? So. Um, it's, it's a great game with great characters. Cool. Um, I've really loved all of the cases so far. I'm not sure how far into it I am, but I've been loving it. Yeah. So I definitely recommend it. If you like point and click games, if you like, you know, sort of detective-y games, it's good. I like the animation of them moving their mouths. It's, it's kind of like the whole, we're not too serious. So it's kind of like yeah. that, blah, 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 blah. Is it VO? Yeah. Is, the, is all the, is it's it VO? all fully voice acted, yes. Very cool. Which you kind of wouldn't expect. It, it sort of almost looks like, um, kind of like a, a Phoenix Wright game in, in a little bit of a way, you know, where you kind of expect uh, everything to, to not be voiced over just because of yeah. the way the animation is done and the way that the graphics are done you kind mm -hmm. of expect maybe you'd have it in the beginning but not like all throughout so that's really impressive yeah it's all voice acted it's really good hmm. mm -hmm. was not even on my radar so thank you yeah i hadn't heard of it either until i popped open steam and it was like you might like this game i was like you know what <laughs> <All right. laughs> there are moments that you're correct i would like that game <laughs> Uh, what about you, George? What have you been playing lately? Uh, <laughs> a lot of weird <laughs> VR stuff. Which, weird uh, VR stuff? Yeah, yeah. I think um, me and Jesse might be able to rave about this stuff for a while. So so I have a PSVR headset. Uh, I have managed to plug it into a computer and get some incredibly hacky, janky versions of a lot of the PC VR games going. I've been playing a lot of Subnautica over the past couple days, and I, I absolutely love that. Um, it's been out for years, though, in early access. It finally released its quote-unquote final build in January. Have you guys played that before? Subnautica, uh, Subnautica yes. is a devil game made a, by a, terrible yes. people. A devil game? Yeah, yeah. Imagine, so, imagine it completely... Imagine putting your, your like head in a Subnautica bowl and, and it covering all of your vision. Ooh. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. This game really does get me excited. I... I have talked to people who either love it or hate it, and I'm wondering if the VR actually helps it out a lot. 
because uh, it's gorgeous seeing beautiful coral reefs in VR. It's terrifying seeing yeah. dark, scary abysses in VR that completely cover you up from all angles. And a weird habit that I've developed is that some parts of this ocean are just off limits because they're too scary. <laughs> like there's yeah. no invisible wall. There's no high level monsters blocking me there. There is just like my own assurance that if something does bite me out there i might like jump and break something in my house totally. so yeah. i'm like valuing my character's life like i'm not going down to scary places unless i'm sure i'm properly equipped to at least like not flinch if something tries to attack me there and every every uh I, I i've been spending most of my time in some shallow friendly waters around your spawn but every now and then you get a glimpse of something massive and terrifying as a murky silhouette off in the distance. And since VR is making me play so much more cautiously, I have yet to see them up close. And I'm a little bit worried about a kind of like zipper in the monster's costume effect. Like maybe the animations might be like less convincing once you actually get a good eye on them, but I love not knowing right now. Like yeah. the thrill of, of not knowing what I'm gonna find out there is is as of right now, this this like honeymoon stage of, of the game's consuming that I'm at it's it's a beautiful feeling and I I it, really hope it lasts it does not matter how jank or how unreal a thing is in VR uh the oculus um demo that they used to have when you first bought oculus has a scene where like a t-rex comes down a hallway it's like your demo oh, scene you mm, how to mm, use yeah, it yeah I've seen that and a t-rex literally gets in your damn face and it looks you know big no t-rex mm -hmm. yeah even though I know there's no T-Rex, even though it's not like the best rendered T-Rex, it's still terrifying. It's an uncomfortable situation where you're like, mm -mm. And, and that sense of scale is like what you don't get on a flat screen. And that's like, that adds a new layer of, of spook right. that, uh, that I just, uh, I, I wonder if it's not there. Because I've, I've talked to people who like couldn't stand the game and, and got bored of it very quickly. And I wonder, I wonder if it's, if it's just me hyping up the VR train, you know? No, no, I, I'm, I'm like, search results have all indicated you're entirely right. Most people are like, this is the way to experience that particular game. It is terrifying. Right. <laughs> the only person that I've consistently watched play this game, it wasn't in VR, but it was Kraken. And Kraken is like Jesse, who's like terrified of deep water. <laughs> so it was like, it was really fun watching him play because yeah, because he oh. was so cautious with absolutely yeah. everything. Everything, you it know? changes your play style. You go yeah. slower, and and I I think I'm I'm going down that Kraken hole. Like I'm playing a lot of old games in VR now. Like I I did a lot of Bioshock One and Bioshock Infinite the other day, and uh, uh both of those are just such they they turn into like theme park environments because they're not right. to life scale. Like uh, you never noticed that before. But furniture in Bioshock games are either too small or too big to fit humans, <laughs> and it gives the whole world a kind of like like a, a World of Warcraft disproportionate, uh, cartoony feel to it that yeah. uh, fits a style. It, it reveals a part of that game's art style that I never even knew was there. A creepy and tune fan. It makes me wonder if they do, if they do a re-release of some older games in VR. It makes me wonder if they're going to change the size of the furniture and they stuff. They might clean it up. Right. I, I mean, I think it's scaled like that mostly because you're looking for like things to pick up, like the money or the yeah. vials and things like that. So and doorways. I imagine they might they might change some of that. That would be really <laughs> interesting to see. Doorways in Bioshock are really big to fit the player, and when you play a made for VR game, they're typically more realistic, and you don't. Right. You, I guess you don't re you, you don't realize so much stuff until you see it from uh, from from the perspective of your own two eyeballs at accurate sizes. I would not have thought that Subnautica would have actually been that terrifying initially. So I'm glad that you brought this up because um, have any of you guys ever been snorkeling in in big open water or uh, scuba diving? <laughs> No. Okay. Never. When I went to Hawaii, Oof. we did um, snorkeling, but like really out in the open water, like right off the big island. And I had never been snorkeling before. So this was like a pretty big experience. And so the very first time I looked down, I was scared so much. Yeah. Mm. Open water always oh was a bit God, scary can... for me anyway, because it's like I'm putting my entire body into <gasps> something else's environment. You know? your, your first person view model in Subnautica also has legs. Yes, so yes. So when you look <laughs> down, you see you legs see dangling yes. uh, above the open water. Mm -hmm. 
and and it's 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 harrowing and it's going to take me forever to get used to i can't look down if i need to go from point a to point <laughs> b in that place i just look at the horizon level yeah. and don't think i try not to think about what's what could be down there yeah. i can't even i can't even trust the plane of water anymore <laughs> the internet has ruined it for me because like they have you know how they have those videos where they like mix two clips where it's like a person going down a water slide and they pop in the water and there's a shark right there Fuck oh, that shit. Yeah. I can't <laughs> even, I that is ruined even the getting into water for me because I was like I don't even fucking know what's down there if I put my head down there and there's like a shark like what a bitch I don't want any of that but I, I, I also want to stress the other side of the coin is that when nope. you're in the shallows and it's beautiful and really shallow and full of fun, friendly fish, it's actually a really empowering feeling being able to like glide and move in any direction you want. There's some really cute animals that have like fun visual designs. There's there's manatee things that fart exploding gas bubbles out. And I I, I feel like this is an experience that it, it, it feels like like a very true, honest realization of what's fun about thinking about the ocean. There's both the horror and the, the, the beauty of it. And yeah, I'm the hell with the ocean, nuke the whale. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Okay. No, I, I'm with you on that because when, when I was having that snorkeling experience, the idea was we're supposed to be snorkeling with dolphins and there were pods of dolphins that would move from place to place and you would see the bubbles come up and there was actually like a mating vortex that was happening. You see the bubbles and you could see like the scuba oh, divers. Oh, that, so the dolphin orgy was like yes, that, bubbling up some bubbles. Yes, you could see that happening. And they were like right alongside me. So once I got done being terrified and losing my, you actually start to sink when you, you know, you can't really do the whole thing that you're supposed to be doing, you know, snorkeling and you're supposed to be like da da da, floating around and you know, I was starting to sink because I was freaking out so much. Once I got my breathing under control, I was like, this is amazing. This is so awesome. It's like the widest FOV you've ever seen. <laughs> it's just like, right. this is so incredible. <laughs> Seeing so yeah, many things. I, but yeah. One of my favorite things about it is just like feeling like a dolphin. Like just, mm. just if you get a nice sense of speed going, you can zip around and, and make these nice smooth turns and then like gobble up a fish on your way through. And uh, it, it, it feels like, a video game setting I'm not very familiar with using technology that's like new and cutting edge and I'm also seeing the game from a perspective I'm not used to seeing a game from and for a survival craft-a-thon procedurally generated like big open blob map kind of game I'm really appreciating how different it feels from what I've gotten myself used to all these years and that's that's half the fun of VR right right it's just seeing the old uh, in a new way I just like the fact that it's uh, an experience that other people haven't had, but yet I've had a kind of like a similar experience. And I played Subnautica prior to ever going snorkeling. So I was never really terrified of it until I'd actually been snorkeling. And now watching like the videos of people playing this in VR, it, that's terrifying me because I have been snorkeling and I know what the feeling of being in open water like that feels like. Right. So that actually intensifies uh, the view. So for me, it's it's really nice to oh. be able to say that, hey, that is actually what it feels like. What you're feeling in VR in that game, it, it is very, very close to like what it actually does feel like. And that's really, that's really satisfying to be able to say because most of the vr stuff i've done is like ooh, climb everest something i haven't done also you know? someone in chat just pointed out and i google search to check it's actually not procedurally generated they hand designed a very very huge map that looks like ooh. it could have been but i had my suspicions because i'm also really liking the pacing to it i like how uh many new places i'm finding and how it, it seems like they have little set pace moments set up there's a lot of fun uh, kind of like archaeology environmental storytelling to do with uh with, with some wreckage that has notes and, and, and trash that, that gives you clues on how better to survive and incorporate it into your own struggle. And I also want to say that I still have yet to have a real big encounter with what they call the Leviathan class predators. I've just, I've just <laughs> seen them in the distance and the, 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 the really effective horror is the horror where you don't see the monster, where you yes. just feel the monster's presence. And the worst parts of Subnautica are when you just feel <laughs> that there's something in the darkness out there and you don't see it, but you know how vulnerable you are and, and what a struggle it would be to get away if it came after you, which I don't even know yet. Maybe the games are a lot easier than it feels, but it feels really, really scary. Mm -hmm. Jesse, I, I feel like this is 
like chipping away at your sanity. No. Would you like to talk about something else? <laughs> no, 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 I've uh, I, what I would like to talk about because everyone keeps saying, Jesse, you should play it. You should play it. I told everyone for ten million dollars, I will play that game. <laughs> that is my price. <laughs> my price. If there's a rich Saudi prince out there who wants to give me ten million bucks, I'll play that game. Just no check bad. your spam folder. For ten million bucks, <laughs> I want Jesse to go like legit deep sea diving. <laughs> <laughs> That would cost you twenty. Uh, I figured you probably have to pay. Sharks. If you're paying fifty million bucks, let's win with the sharks. It's like I remember seeing yeah. the uh, the some PUBG streamers like uh, do skydiving with Dead Mouse the other day, and I'm just like, this could be Jesse's thing. You know, we just need some sponsors to come skydiving. together. Skydiving doesn't doesn't scare me at all. Sharks, they are they. I've seen Jaws three. Yeah, they know the concept of revenge. <laughs> There, yeah, there, there aren't birds that could just scoop you out of the sky like a, like a shark could decide to do all of a sudden. There were, though, and that's oh. why. Can I tell you, one of the best, I think it might have been a Radio Lab, one of the best episodes of any podcast I've ever listened to is when they found a skull of like a uh, like a dead Neanderthal, like a, like a, like a, an ancient man. And for years, they couldn't figure out what killed this guy because he had claw marks all over his face. And they were like, well, it had to have been some sort of saber-toothed cat or something. And for years, they couldn't figure it out. And eventually, someone looked up inside the eye sockets, and the same scratches were there. So literally, what they ended up figuring out is that a bird reached down and grabbed him from the eye sockets and lifted his ass off the ground and ate his ass. And oh that's God. what... Okay, so millions of years ago, big prehistoric like, birds might have been able to... As, as people, uh, as, as human beings have this weird thing like we see shadows we have this like yeah want to like this need to look behind us because we still have that instinctual thing like things can still get us from we, above as humans have had to worry about that for a lot more years than we've had to worry about car crashes and diabetes yeah so it's like ingrained in us that we're terrified of things that can come from above but we're sort of over that phase and now i live the terrified <laughs> of things that can come from below because that's where the real monsters are i get them I love that Jesse lives so close to the water. <laughs> it's Do you like, think oh, Jesse loves that? Of any, of any state and, and location in the state to live in. Oh, the, water's, the water's lovely. No, I, love I know. The beach and sand, it's very nice. Uh, it's everything that's in the water. I don't want to be a part of that. Let them have that. We can have ours. Do you guys remember the learning? Animals. Do you guys remember learning about like the, what is it, the continental shelves in, in, in like uh, science class yeah. or whatnot? Sure. Yeah. That terrifies me. <laughs> Just the idea <laughs> that it's like really? it's like yeah, because I, I you know I'm a, I'm a I'm a kid at this point. You know I'm probably like what nine years old or something. And science teachers are basically telling me oh. it's like like because I'd never been to the ocean before. I grew up in Ohio. You know <laughs> this is like what Lake Michigan. I'm not gonna. <laughs> You know, I'm not gonna wander off and then all of a sudden boom, drop. But that and that's the scale that my brain is thinking of. But that was something that genu genuinely terrified me. Is I thought I'm never ever gonna go to the ocean ever because if I if I go out too far, I'm gonna drop off that continental shelf. No, no, it didn't strike me that I could ever float or swim. No, I'm just gonna drop off into the the deep of deepest deep where the Titanic is because the continental shelf drops. Like, I don't mm. know why that stuck with me, and I have no idea why I'm bringing it up Gosh. now. I think but it's so just, it freaked me it's out. Like, the concept is cool. All of it's, I'm glad there are people who are braver than me who are willing to go <laughs> out there and look at that shit. I just, uh, yeah, I don't want to be eaten. That's all. How much would they thing. have to pay you to get you in, like, a shark cage, like, off of, like, Cape whatever in, in like, South Africa? Like, you know, where they take here's, you down in the shark the cages? I, w I think... That's here, safer. Here's, <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, here's what would, here's what we going through. I'm going to tell you exactly what we're going through in mind. Okay. I'm in the boat. I'm waiting to get in this damn shark cage. In my mind, I'm running the numbers on between here and the shark cage. What are the odds that the shark's going to bump the shark cage? I'll fall into the open water and be eaten by the shark versus getting into the shark cage. Fine. Once I'm in the shark cage, not even worried. I totally believe in the safety of like a, sh a, a piece of metal. I'm not even worried. And you know that but they'll be coming at you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'm fine with that. I, at right. th that point, I antagonize the shit out of them. Like, who's in charge now? Oh, yeah. I'd be fine. I wouldn't even be worried. I'd be, like, mesmerized that the shark wants to eat me so Sharks are so cute. They only think they're at the top of the food chain. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, I'd have a great time. I wouldn't be worried. It would be uh, the whole idea of, like, getting in and out. That would be terrifying because that's, like, the brief moment where that son of a bitch is, like, 
I'll be waiting for you, Cox. He's Don't like, you do that up, like on oh, the yeah, boat? Wait. He's licking his lips. I think you do. Got, like, I, I think you do. Knife and he's waiting. I oh, think yeah. they like hold the the opening to it like at the level, and then they lower you into it. So you're technically you say always. That, but in there's it. a good five or ten percent chance. Sharks can jump. That shark jumps out, and bites me in half. I would the be. End. I would be more concerned oh, about getting speared by a marlin than I would be at that point of being taken uh, down by a shark could getting a marlin, into the like, cage. Like, like, what, what scary sea animals, though, could fit uh, 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 eating appendages through the bars of a cage? Oh, a kraken. Dude, if you, like, <laughs> wander into a man of war in a shark cage, you can't move out of the way. You can't, sw you just, you're kind of screwed, come just to me, think of it. Just They're remember, not called man of war cages. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. I, we're talking about Subnautica. Subnautica. No, I know, I know. It does a great job of uh, incorporating these these rational, reasonable fears of ours. All our fears. All our fears. Yeah. 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 Normal I, people that's fears. My one, that's my one irrational fear. Everything else, I couldn't give a shit. I'm like, all right, sure. It's but for some reason, sharks just get me. And I, there's video footage of me being like, <laughs> I love sharks. Sharks are the coolest. Like 10 year old Jesse. Okay, I Toad. Love sharks. <laughs> I, I still can't believe that I'm such a, like, <laughs> Uh, uh, I can't suspend my disbelief enough kind of asshole. Like, I'm still most afraid of car crashes and diabetes right now, I think. Mm -hmm. I I wish I wasn't, but I don't know. Subnautica is getting up there. You can control whether or not you step foot into the ocean. You are out of control when a car crash, you know, decides mm -hmm. to happen to you. That can be that someone else can decide right. to do that to you yes. even, and yeah, there's nothing totally. you can do about it. Sometimes diabetes, you can't see coming. I nightmares often. <laughs> yes. So yeah, cholesterol, smoking habits, uh, uh, the, the genetic luck. It's oof. <laughs> All right, we are winding down to the end of the podcast. Um, we want to talk about releases, I guess. Let's see what's coming out soon-ish. Yeah. Um, not really. I mean, there are some things coming out that I'm probably just not gonna really talk about that much because. We'll have more time on the next episode of the podcast. Mm. Um, but Valkyria Chronicles 4 comes out on September 25th. That looks pretty good. It'll be on PS4, Xbox, and Switch. The one that I guess most of us will probably play will be Life is Strange 2, Episode 1, which will be coming yeah. out on September 27th. Um, FIFA 19, we'll, I guess we'll get Crendor back <laughs> for that one. <laughs> Lining comes, up now. Comes out on September 28th. And, and this is this is the thing I love about it is FIFA month. This is the part I love. FIFA 19 coming out on PS4, PS3, Xbox, Xbox 360, PC, and Switch because we want all your money. Right. <laughs> um, one thing I am looking forward to, I know it's going into October, but um, I'm not sure if you guys played it. Uh, it's been a while. I feel like it's been at least seven years the world ends with you they're bringing it out mm. on switch as oh. like a oh. as a they're calling it the final remix so they've Ooh. redone some of the soundtrack and, and polished it up switch has a touch screen for yes. it so yes and i break think out I, your ds styluses <laughs> well I, I originally played it on ds so I, I really enjoyed it and that's coming out october 12th and let's see wwe 2k19 comes out october 5th Oh, and one that I guess, um, hey, never know, might show up at next CoxCon, Jackbox Party Pack 5 on October mm. 17th. That's a thing. Um, Towerfall is coming out on Switch yes. in two days. Very excited about that. And um, for Jesse, Steam keeps telling me that a game that just came out is very similar to the letter it doesn't look like it to me, but maybe <laughs> it's something that you would want to play with Scary Game Squad called The Conjuring House. Literally just I out. have it already on my list of things to oh, play. Oh, shit. Ooh. There you go. Awesome. Steam keeps being like, you played the letter, you should totally play this game. And I look at footage, and I'm like, ha, no. <laughs> yeah, Not everyone like, has been bugging weird. me to play that. And I'm like, look, when the completionist returns home from his Japanese trip. We'll get on that. But until then, I can't do shit. It's scary game squaw at the moment. We don't, we don't have. <laughs> I'll be Gerard. I'll, I'm going to put on a beard and I'll show up. Got this. <laughs> Great. You'd have to play if that's what you want to do. <laughs> oh, shit. We're not still in the Davis plays all the games section of scary game squad. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Yo, um, also, uh, did we already talk about the fact that 
speaking of VR, Creed Rise to Glory is out right now. Which oh, is like, I've heard good things. It is basically Creed, so it's like the continuation of the movie Creed, which was a great movie, and it is a VR kind of like Mike Tyson's Punch Out kind of thing. I love it's Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Cool. <laughs> I've. I'm, a friend of mine's been playing that, and they they liken it to like one of the as as like an early example of of a VR concept fighting game. Apparently, you can do taunts to refill health. Yeah. Uh, you actually have to pay attention to to where your gloves are. It's not just flailing. It looks super cool. It definitely is something where I was like, "Oh shit!" and and the characters definitely have like a cartoony vibe to them. So there isn't like I don't know. It's interesting. I'm super excited about that one. Um, and then I think uh, Time Spinner was another game that's coming out that looked uh, very much like a uh, kind of a, a like Metroidvania a slash beautiful 2D Metroidvania about a young woman who travels through time to destroy the <laughs> empire that killed their family. Like, like the, the boss fights and like yeah, the, the shit that happens in this game. It looks the trailers fantastic. And so if wow. that's any indication, I'm like really excited about the way this game looks because it definitely, it has that thing that I think a lot of 2D platformers are missing, which is like, it feels like you probably play this game on a Super Nintendo. <laughs> like it has the look and the vibe of like, this definitely was a super high quality game 20 years ago and it looks great. And so I, I, I love that kind of feel because a lot of platforming games are like, they made it look like crap because that's what they think you want. But it's like, I don't want it to look like crap. I want it to look like amazing shit 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Let cram as much detail into that crap as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this looks great. This looks like a fantastic one. So what's coming up next for you guys on the channel? Brooke, can we start with you? Um, Same all with me. Uh, just streaming on Dex Bonus on Twitch. And uh, that's really about it. And juggling work and a baby. But it's going good and she's great and if you follow me on twitter or anything like that you probably see pictures of her all the time so there's that <laughs> <laughs> yeah come hang out we have fun awesome jesse how about you what do you have coming up this week anything fun uh yeah hey um right now you can see on the channel uh myself dodger crying crendor playing uh the delightful strange brigade super fun that's a really fun game. Yeah, if you haven't ever heard of it, it is a uh, game that's very much akin to like Left 4 Dead 2, uh, except it takes place in like a movie-esque version of the 1930s, and it's super silly and fun. Um, and then probably Friday, I would assume, since that's when it's out, there'll be Life is Strange 2 stuff. And... Uh, yeah, just, you know, the usual craziness and more Spider-Man. If you want to spoil yourself and see the ending of Spider-Man, I think that episode is up tomorrow. So <laughs> Wednesday, for those of you who are watching this in the future. So, yeah, and then you can get spoiled by the amazing ending of that game, which is too much for this world. The last, like, hour is just, like, all the feels. So, yeah, and that's that's what's going on. Nice. How about you, George? What you got going on? I'm working on two things, both of which I'm very, very proud of. Uh, one idea I kind of want to keep to myself. It has something to do with Japan, something no one else I think has really covered before, something the Japanese media themselves don't even enjoy covering. And that's all I'll say right now, if I can even get people to talk about the subject I want to research on. The other thing is, I am looking into Telltale. I have made contact with sources. I do want to put something together for that, but I don't want to release it if it's not going to be unique. So what I, I, I want to make, th these things take forever. So it's either going to be the end of this week or the middle or end of next week. But I do want to do a real comprehensive look at not just what happened behind the scenes there, but also the situation that that studio was in, how it's analogous to some other studios, how things could have gone differently, hopefully with uh, supported by interviews and experts who are involved in the matter who can uh, fill me in and support things. There, there, there might be anonymous sources again this time, which is going to have to be a reality of this story in particular. But I'm, I'm doing big, fancy investigative stuff again. No, uh, no review or uh like kind of kind of video essay stuff I'm, I'm looking into issues and it feels good to be be on that beat again and that's what sets you apart from drama channels <laughs> 
Oh, thanks. You, you don't just throw it out there. I mean, it would be so easy, and I, I don't mean to slam people who make their entire living off of it, but it does seem very hasty, some of the things that people mm-hmm. put up. It's just and, and not honestly, as And honestly, I researched. wish I could do my stuff faster. I, Everybody I, does. I might be able to work out a system someday, but <laughs> as of right now, they are, they are slow but rewarding endeavors that seem to set me apart. Okay. <laughs> Okay, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Co-Optional Podcast. Thank you so much to George for hanging out with us and bringing Thank the Subnautica t- terror to Jesse's life. I, mean, <laughs> I-, I feel like we've been hammering on Jesse Monster. the past couple episodes because, you know, we brought Crendor in to terrify him and, and then, you know, Monsters. then sharks because that's a thing. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll be back next week. I have no idea who our guest is going to be next week. <laughs> we'll see. We'll figure it out. Um but yeah, thank you guys so much again for tuning in. I have been Jenna Bain. That has been Brooke Thorne. I'm trying to point the right way, and it's not happening that way. <laughs> that has been it. Jesse Cox, and that Hi. has been George. <laughs> <laughs> Super Thanks so much Hawk. for having me on. And we will see you guys next time. Bye-bye, Bye. everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.